the LG G4 is one of the most anticipated TVs of 2024. So I bet you're wondering, does it live up to the hype? Should you spend your hard-earned money on the LG G4? Or maybe you should just go with the LG G3 instead, or a different TV entirely. Well, hopefully, before this video is over, you will know the answer to that question. So, what makes the LG G4 different from the LG G3? Well, in the 55-inch and 65-inch size, this year you do have a stand included in the box. Now, this stand is not your traditional TV stand. It comes with about 12 screws altogether, and it is something that you have to assemble unlike some other stands. Some other stands are going to be easier to assemble than this, but this is one of the more complicated stands on the market. I will say though, the actual install process of this wasn't hard at all, and the stand itself looks pretty nice as you can see here. The TV does come with four HDMI 2.1 ports, all capable of 144Hz gaming if you have a supported PC to do 144Hz, something that the G3 wasn't capable of. Speaking of things that G3 didn't have, let's talk about the processor. The processor is new for 2024. This is the Alpha 11 processor, an upgrade from the old Alpha 9 processor series. Usually we see an upgrade in generations for the same processor, but this year we are getting a whole new processor altogether, and LG is promising big advancements in picture processing, some that even use some complex AI algorithms. Because after all, it is an AI processor, and they are speaking very highly on this. Now I'll speak on the processing performance in a little bit, but the G4 also is going to be boasting a higher peak brightness, and it is reportedly using the LG Display MLA 2.0 meta technology, which they claim is capable of 3000 nits, but remember, LG Display only makes the panels, not the TVs. LG Electronics makes the TVs using the panels that are supplied to them. That's a very important thing for you to remember. You need to think of them as two separate companies. When it comes down to their messaging, it's a little bit different altogether. As for the actual brightness impact of this TV, I'm going to get into that. But quickly, on the topic of what feels the same or exactly the same, the controller is still the same outdated, ultra clicky, magic remote which made sense in the era of the nintendo wii but right now this just feels very outdated the home screen itself has gotten a facelift this year to a degree but when you're talking about the settings and ui it's mostly the same as last year and you know they still do have the intuitive quick menu that they added last year which i do enjoy so i'm glad that's sticking around now the speed of the OS itself leaves me wanting a little bit more out of it because it is a premium TV and it just feels a little bit dated. And again, this is just another example of something they should probably try to update in the future as it's been the same for a while now. As far as the sound, it sounds pretty similar to last year. I don't think they improved much and I would say that thinking about a sound upgrade is highly recommended. Now let's dive into picture quality, but before I do, I just want to let you know that I purchased this TV for review. This was not sponsored in any way, but if you do want to support the channel, one of the best ways that you could do so is by clicking one of the affiliate links in the description before making your next purchase. Thank you very much for your support. Okay, now let's talk about picture quality. Let's start with the thing that stuck out the most to me, and it really did stick out, and that is HDR Impact. If you were looking into buying a TV that takes full advantage of HDR, look no further. The G4 is that TV. This TV has a punch that will knock you off your feet in any mode that you enjoy, no matter what. It doesn't matter if you enjoy filmmaker mode, cinema, standard mode, or vivid mode. Every mode is going to give you HDR impact. And that's what I really love about this TV. The TV feels like it nailed tone mapping, as most HDR scenes show an impressive HDR presentation, and I never once thought that I wish it gave me more brightness or I wish it had more highlight detail. It just seemed to have a great balance when showing you detail and providing impactful visuals. I didn't feel like any picture was dull with the G4, and I gotta say, not everybody has been getting this right in terms of the TV world. And I will even say that this feels like an improvement over the LG G3 in that regard, as I did have some issues with the tone mapping in previous years. So what about 3000 nit brightness claims? Does it match up to those? Well, you have to remember LG Electronics isn't the one that's making those brightness claims. That's just what the panel is capable of. The actual TV itself probably is not going to drive that. And if it does drive that, it's only going to hold it for a second. And it's probably just going to be in vivid mode. 
I'm not sure if there's vivid mode measurements out there, but one thing I do want you guys to remember about measurements, I want to encourage you guys to ditch the line of thinking that windowed measurements matter as much as you think they matter. Do they have a big impact on watching TV? And from what I've learned and what I've observed, this is actually not the case. So personally, I started to ignore windowed measurements and I started focusing on real scene brightness like the one that Classy Tech Calibrations provides on his channel. If I'm looking at measurements, that's what I look at. However, I don't always look at measurements anyway, because from what I've learned talking to multiple people, what really matters is the actual tone mapping that the TV is doing. This is what gives you the impactful highlights. This is what gives you the highlight details. This is where you are going to see your HDR make your picture come alive. Whether you're talking about the TV's tone mapping or you're talking about using dynamic tone mapping on the TV itself. All of this is going to matter a lot when it comes down to your picture quality. And what you prefer is what you prefer at the end of the day. There's no wrong answer here whether or not you want to turn on dynamic tone mapping or if you want to just let the TV do its thing with the tone mapping with dynamic tone mapping off. So I think paying attention to how a TV is going to do its tone mapping, that's what's going to make a big difference in the HDR impact more than any other element in my opinion at the end of the day. But when it comes down to the brightness capability of this TV, I would say that it's an impressive TV that stands on its own. But you also have to understand that most movies and shows don't really call for the TV to get that bright. So at times it could feel like this TV is a bit of an overkill as I did have the S90D and the A80L next to it at times. It looked nearly identical in terms of luminance. So it really depends on the movie or the TV show that you watch if the scene is going to call for it or if the movie is even going to allow it to deliver on that brightness. But I know what you're thinking, not everybody watches TV in filmmaker mode and movie mode. Some of you guys watch it in cinema home or vivid. Don't worry, I got you vivid vikings right here. If you guys are looking for a TV that's going to just cap out brightness better than any other TV on the market, it's the LG G4 by far. When you really want to crank up that wildness, my goodness, the G4 can do it. Using things like the expression enhancer with the brightness setting and also changing the dynamic tone mapping to on, I think it's going to be an absolute treat for those of you that love this type of picture setting. And this TV delivers on brightness like no other TV I've seen before. I promise you that you'll see scenes that'll leave your jaw on the floor when it comes down to this TV. So how about the processing? Is it a noticeable upgrade over other LG TVs? It is, and I have an LG C1, which might not be a LG G3, but it does look significantly better than that LG C1 in the processing department. Now I looked at a bunch of videos next to the A80L from Sony as well, and a lot of times I thought that the fine details were just about the same as the A80L, so I was very impressed with the processing from the LG G4. Now I'm not going to say it's better than the XR processor and I'm not even going to say it's the same as the XR processor. I need to do more testing before I can even come close to saying that. But I am really encouraged that it does show some great results when it is next to the A80L. So overall it does feel like the processing is an upgrade over the G3 because it does seem like they're pushing the brightness in the right locations and I am seeing more clarity on fine details than I was with the G3 last year. Now in previous years LG OLED has a feature called AI Picture Pro but this wouldn't work with copyrighted content. Now with the LG G4 it does work with copyrighted content and I've tested it with copyrighted content. It does indeed work. It just doesn't work very well. At times it feels like it doesn't even activate and also at times it feels like it does completely the opposite of what I would want it to do. Using a scene in Black Widow, I checked out some of the fine details on her backpack. It looked like the fine details were scrubbed away and it looked very smudgy. The next time I tried it on the very same scene, it ended up doing some edge enhancement to those fine details. I turned the TV off, tried it again, and it did nothing at all. So sometimes it doesn't even work. So it's very weird. It's very inconsistent. It's one of those things that it might have to just learn the content that you're watching before it even works properly. I don't know. Maybe you want to use it. If you do use it, try it out and try it out for a couple of days to give it a chance. But if you don't want it messing with picture quality at all, and sometimes even in a negative way, then I would just suggest turning it off. Now getting into gaming, I'll just say this. If you're a gamer and you watch a ton of movies as well, you're probably just gonna wanna buy this TV. Gaming is astronomically better than any other OLED TV from LG in the past. 
because it really feels like you don't lose much picture quality finally going into game mode. Although I do have to mention some things are still restricted, but I'll talk more on that in just a second. But as far as the color brightness not being lost, if you're familiar with past LG OLED TVs, going into game mode would reduce your luminance level, making colors look way less impactful, especially with the G3 last year. It just stuck out way more with the G3 for whatever reason, probably because the MLA. But it was more noticeable that when you switched from game optimizer to another mode, you were losing color in Game Optimizer. This year though, when you switch from Game Optimizer to another mode, as long as you're using the same exact settings, for example, when I'm switching between Game Optimizer and Filmmaker mode here, I have the same exact settings and my colors are not changing at all. If I did this last year, I would see a reduction in color brightness and that would lead to the overall HDR impact of my games, leaving me wanting more and having competitors easily beat it with their TVs in game mode. That's not the case anymore. So really big props to LG for listening and changing this game mode color brightness issue. But I did mention there is still some issues with game mode, like color banding, AKA posterization. Unfortunately, there's still no fix for this either as smooth gradation doesn't work in game mode. Yes, not even with ALLM engaged. Also, SDR peak brightness is still locked out. Although I do feel like in SDR gaming that the default brightness that you get is more than sufficient enough and it didn't look much dimmer than the S90D despite being locked in peak brightness. So I'd say that SDR gaming didn't look dim at all, didn't look dull at all, and it's actually fine. But I won't let LG off the hook with this. It should be unlocked for those that want the highest peak brightness for their SDR. The TV's capable of it. So those of you that want more out of your SDR brightness, you can use ALLM with one of the other modes, you can achieve higher brightness with only a minor hit to your input latency. Now I did test 144 hertz gaming and it worked flawlessly. I'll talk more on the PC performance in the gaming review. The TV does have really great features like multi-view and one of the things about multi-view is that you can actually use two HDMI ports with multi-view, something a lot of TVs aren't capable of doing. So multi-view is cool, but let's talk about motion. Motion in this TV so far seems really great. There's this real cinema option on the TV and it works as advertised. I didn't have any issues at all watching movies with this. So if you're looking for a TV with really great motion, the LG G4 can give that to you. And on the topic of motion, motion in sports is really great and the visual quality when watching sports in SDR is fantastic as well. One of the brightest OLED TVs that you can get when it comes down to watching sports. So if you're looking for that, this is by far one of the best sports watching TVs that you can buy. So there's a lot of positives going with the G4. It is by far one of the best TVs of the year, but is it the best TV of the year? What's your opinion? Tell me in the comments. I'm not ready to crown it just yet because I do need to see other TVs this year, but I do consider it in the S tier for sure. And it is within the same category as the A95L, which was the best TV of the year last year. And don't worry, we will have comparisons with the LG G4 amongst some of the best TVs of 2024. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that because you're not gonna wanna miss it. Now, if you wanna see this TV go up against the Samsung QD OLED, check out this video right here. I think you're gonna like it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.